glad and it's honored to be here to present a little um, ethnographic studies of mine in a very marginal group in the north of Xinjiang and in Iliwali, the, in the city called Wawuja. Um, I'm an ethnomusicologist, so music is my main interest and I always search for people who have great voice to sing for me. When I first met Nojan Hafiz in, uh, in Hulja, it was back in 2005, I was an undergraduate student in ethnomusicology and someone told me that there's a, a guy who um, re recites Quran with really emo uh, emotional uh, melodies, so I went to his house and what I really wanted is that he sings for my recorder and I wanted really badly to record him. He um, uh, invites to us to, to his house and he immediately starts to talk about uh, some practice called zikr and some khanqas and some uh, khalifas, some um, great moments that he, 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 he knew when he was young and this was totally new for me, I didn't know any of them. Um, I grew up in this region and I didn't know this kind of practice existed at that time. So, um, uh, he, what he did actually for us, he immediately sing uh, the, the, the zikrs for us. He didn't explain uh, how they had the silsila linked to somewhere or what the, the brotherhood, what the, the spirituality was about. He immediately sing, he just sing the song for us. So that was my first contact with Sufism was musical actually. So I went back to, to the city um, each year till he's passed away in 2011. I did my master's degree uh, based on my field work um, on a Tunekitsi. It's a Zikr practice um, whole night. So I recorded it, I filmed it, um, and I did my modest um, studies on that. So today what I want to um, talk about it's to share this experience with, uh, with you, um, share the, the short biography of Nujan Hafiz, how he came across all these uh, different moments of, uh, of Sufism in, uh, in Xinjiang. From, um, from his time, um, like he was born in 19, uh, 1927, and he uh, went to a school, a Jadid school called Umut Mehter, and he was a um, chief poem at that time, he sings at the school musicals, and um, he, he's from basically a non-Sufi family. And then when he finished his school, he, uh, he found a job in a Russian hospital. He worked with Russian girls and he started to uh, speak Russian and he was really happy about that. But at some point, he, point, he, he felt like he has to be um, serious with himself. And he stopped his job at this hospital and he started a small business. Um, uh, I want to, to introduce a little bit um, the um, spiritual soundscape of 1930s or 1940s when he was um, 20 years old. Um, according to his description, um, I would love to show you Nujan yeah. okay. um, There were three important Hanukkahs inside the city wall of Hulja. There were many others but uh, outside, but the main spiritual soundscape happened in these three Hanukkahs. And there's Sharish uh, Hanukkah, the city, um, inside city Hanukkah, the Terek Mazar Hanukkah, which is a shrine who exists again uh, still to today. Some, um, some um, Hui uh, believers, they came to Terek Mazar to still uh, do some uh, rituals that we don't, uh, the local people don't, don't know actually and it's renewed near, uh, near um, in two years ago I think and it's open to the tourists now, it's a touristic area now. And the th uh, third Chanukha was called Nafichi Chanukha which is a um, neighborhood and the city had a very sp uh, busy spiritual life, the brothers went from one Chanukha to another to attend each uh, zikr of each Chanukha and the the definition of Nurjan Hafs gave me about these gatherings is very much like the definition of Meshraps today. And Nurjan Hafs says that it was a real school, which we gave the, 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 to the 
the Nashrefs also, we say Nashrefs are the real school. Uh, fathers brought their sons to these hanukas to teach them the manners and the values of the society. The masters, the halbets, showed the good behavior, behaviors. Um, we could learn everything by listening to them, listening to their poems recited by them. Um, we we learned the uh, we were we followed their spiritual beliefs. We learned how to respect the nature, the animals. Even we learn how to behave with our enemies. Um, so, as I said, each Hanukkah had their own schedule. Um, some zikr took place in the morning after the first prayer, some in the afternoon. In the Qurban or Rose the, the, uh, the, the city was really full of zikr sounds everywhere. We can, we can hear it from the streets and people just, the Jama'at moved one from one Hanukkah to another to attend each seeker of the Hanukkahs. Um, uh, the space of seeker were accessible for everyone. And everyone was welcome to participate or uh, to listen, to watch brothers practice their seeker. And it, it was um, um, based on Nurjan Hafiz's memories, it's uh, even open to non-Muslims. And he had some funny <laughs> anecdotes um, about some um, um, musicologists. Maybe some of you know uh, Zikr al Bata or Qasim Jan Khambri, some musicians at that time, who was the uh, um, usuals of these Khanqa. They came to listen to, to Zikrs, and um, some people said today that um, what they did was uh, Muqam canonization and everything uh, um, was also based on uh, Zikr practice at that time. So there were uh, 23 um, uh, Hafiz and uh, Khalubaz, which is, I think, um, quite a number. And he gave me some names, uh, some important figures like Abdul Mutali Khalban, Bahan Khalban, Jalaldin Masum Khalban, and Abu Zal Khalban, who turned out to be Nurjan Hafiz's uh, master. Um, it's in this uh, really flourished uh, soundscape, uh, spiritual soundscape that Nurjan Hafiz came across to the way of Taib. Um, he, he talks about it really uh, with a lot of enthusiasm. He told me that the first time when he heard the voice of his master, um, he said, but my friend, we were sitting not far from the door of the Hanukkah. When the zikr started, I heard this most incredible voice that I have never experienced in my life. I started to cry, and my head was on my knees. I didn't know what was happening to me. I lost all my control of myself. It was such a wonderful feeling. After the zikr, uh, I asked my friend, What's, what was that miraculous voice? He told me that it was Abu Zayr Halpa reciting the stories about the mirage of Prophet. So after a few weeks, um, Nurjan Hafiz find, found his way to go to Abu Zayr Halpa's place to give him his hand to, uh, to get uh, his initiation. Um, I, I, I want also to give you some information about Abu Zayr Halpa's life, which is really uh, important for me because his spiritual life is also musical. Um, he's a grandson of a famous Halpa in the Hoja and son of another Halpa. Uh, but he didn't start his um, um, experience with, with Sufism um, right away. He was really, um, uh, how to say, uh, he had a really strong musical background. He was a musician, he was a singer and he was a big star at the local Meshrat practices. And he went to do some businesses in Central Asia and other cities and he got married and he came back to Hulja and he said, now I have to be settled. So he asked his father, how can I do to, to find my way? So father, his father showed him the, uh, the, the door, literally the door of the Hamba. So um, he started to practice uh, uh, zikrs in these hanukkahs and really soon he became someone really important, a spiritual figure. Um, 
not because he went to some uh, famous or fancy schools to obtain help, his Isha. Uh, he was famous just because of his voice, actually. He, uh, he was designed as a Khalba because he moved many hearts of the faithful. So, um, Nujan Hapas says things like, uh, Ab Abzal Khalba's voice could be heard way far from the outside of the Hamqa. No other Hafiz uh, or Khalbaz uh, could recite Hutmat um, in front of him. If he doesn't come to a Zikr, people will sense his absence. Again, um, I think the, the, the power of singing voice, the, the power of melody, is important here. So, Nurjan Hafiz decided to follow his um, powerful voice. Um, he, he describes also his initiation, uh, how he, he has been initiated to, to, the, um, to his masters. He, he told me basically about how his masters sang uh, some um, poem, how he sang the poems about how dif difficult will be this journey and how he has to be faithful, how ha he has to have um, strong wishes to, to get to the truth, the haqiqat. So, his initiation was also uh, filled with um, um, spiritual songs. So, um, after the initiation, Nujan Hafiz followed his master. Uh, yeah, he basically imitated everything that his master does. So, he just recited the zikrs with him, and even he drank the, drank the tea that he left on the table. So, basically, he was his shadow, actually, to, to learn how to become um, a hapas uh, after. So, uh, Ab Abzai Halpa gave him lots of poetry to memorize, and he spent years to memorize all the, all the poetry. Um, so, soon after a communist power took place in Xinjiang, the Hanukkah started to have some trouble. As we know, uh, the, the Zikr practice turned to less frequent, even secret, and um, this became uh, even more obvious during the Cultural Revolution. The Hanukkahs were closed and Halbas were put in jail. Uh, in the beginning of the Cultural Revolution, Rajan Hafiz um, continued his uh, practices with some brothers because he said it's like an addiction. He cannot stop it like um, just like this. So they practice in some um, <coughs> private houses and they put some bucket of waters in front of um, the, the windows to absorb the sound. <coughs> uh, but soon um, they couldn't do it. Uh, but interestingly, Nurjan Hafiz survived all this um, uh, punishment or banishing of uh, Zikr practice by switching uh, to um, a singer in a theater, um, in a, a musical theater called Anarham. He became a, a performer um, because of his voice, and in this way he, he was not put in jail. He accepted to sing in a theater, and he survived. Um, well, but nothing stopped him to, 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 to perform um, a zikr inside his heart, and he continued Zika Kupi um, during all these black years, and after the revolution, cultural, cultural revolution, um, he, I think he is the main figure who tried to um, reconstruct this, this whole Zika practice. He went to, um, he, in, he, he started to gain some uh, respect in a village, where he was, he was sent to work during the Cultural Revolution, and he started to sing again loudly, and um, some people followed him, he was respected, and um, from uh, in 1980s, he became a, a kind of target of, uh, for musicologists or musicians to come to visit him and to record him, um, not because he's a Sufi, uh, brother or uh, someone from this time, but because he sings things and he, he, he had this um, musical, Uyghur musical heritage, part of Uyghur musical heritage. 
and also the local radio station uh, stations had also recorded him and uh, with some other brothers uh, for a radio show. So um, step by step he gained some trust, uh, some confidence and he um, also he had a dream uh, at that time um, that he, he dreamt his master who put his, his tongue in his mouth and uh, afterward this dream was interpreted uh, like um, um, a permission to let him to, to start music again. So he started to accept some um, followers and uh, many people came to his house to record him to, to, to learn how to do music with these recordings. Um, and because of Nurjan Hafiz, in nowadays there is a non-official brotherhood um, in Buja. A small group of people practice some zikr. Um, they have different uh, kinds of zikr, like zikr evvel, du zari, char zari, si zari, zikr haradem, u zikr aradem, the zikr of si, so. Uh, zikr kabuta, the um, zikr of pajim. And they recited spiritual poems. They gather once a year to the, to do um, one night of zikr. So I will just uh, conclude it. Um, um, so but this example is uh, quite a simple example. Actually, it's the life of one hafiz in a um, in a faraway city, which today doesn't have much um, spiritual activities. Um, but what interested me um, as an ethnomusicologist is the aspect of the, the music. No matter if you prefer to call it sound or melody or prayer, um, um, but the, the, the sound, the sounds was really important for Nurjan Hafiz. And this is how he uh, get in touch with Sufism and how he was initiated and how he um, continued his practice and how he reconstructed today the, the, the Sufi practice. Um,
Thank you very much.